Hello, and welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show, a podcast to help you unlock tremendous growth for your app. My name is Shaman Rao. I'm the CEO of the boutique growth marketing firm, Rocketship HQ, and host of the podcast, Mobile User Acquisition Show. In each episode, we feature experts in the field of mobile growth and discuss strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile growth marketing. By the end of each episode, you will have gained actionable and tactical insights that will help you make more informed decisions in your own work around growth. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is produced by Meryl Vincent, Content Marketing Manager at Rocketship HQ. If you run scan campaigns, you will very likely have seen ridiculously high CPAs or very low ROASs for your scan campaigns on platforms that depend on scan as opposed to those that depend on probabilistic or fingerprinting attribution. Now, we have seen campaigns go from a pre-ATT CPA of $30 to $50 to like $700 to $1,000 in CPA post ATT. Now, one reason for this is very likely Apple's convoluted system of timers in SCAD network. When a user installs, a 24 hour timer starts. The first event is recorded that is completed by a user within a 24 hour time window and the timer is reset. Subsequent events get recorded if they happen within 24 hours of the preceding event. Otherwise, they're not recorded as coming from the campaigns. As a result of this, many events, purchases, registrations or trials that happen outside of the first 24 hours do not get recorded resulting in very high CPAs and very low ROASs. Now, that's one part of the explanation, but that is not the only reason for insane CPAs and ROAS numbers. There is another and more significant yet insidious reason. This is the privacy threshold, which is also referred to as crowd anonymity in Apple's WWDC session in SCAD Network 4.0. According to Apple's WWDC 2022 session on SCAD, SCAD Network 4.0, when the, and I quote here, right? When the install count is low, we take extra steps to protect privacy by limiting the untrackable information sent back. As the count scales up and the un- user's uniqueness starts to blend it with the, the cloud, we send more data back. Finally, as the count reaches the highest tier, we're able to send the most data back while preserving privacy. What that means in practice is that if your campaign has very few installs per day, Apple believes that there is some leeway for you to reverse engineer a user's identity from the conversions coming back from the campaign. And so Apple will send SOC conversion information for many of the users. Let's just say two users completed a purchase and let's just say the conversion value is five for purchase then one of the users will trigger a post back with a conversion value of five, and another will trigger a post back without any conversion value. So even if a user makes a purchase, they're not seen as having made a purchase, even though you're actually making money for them. That's so a scan isn't recording a lot of purchases, and that's the problem. So the lower the daily install count per campaign, the more the number of users whose conversions are censored or obfuscated, and the higher your CPA. According to a study done by AppsFlyer across their portfolio of apps, if you have less than 10 installs per day per campaign, then close to 90% of your conversion values get get obfuscated, which is why the CPAs can be really scary. Now, also note that the privacy threshold determination happens at the time of install and not at the time of a post-install event such as a purchase or registration. So the privacy threshold is determined by the number of installs and not by the number of post-install events. It doesn't matter how many purchases or registrations you get, the privacy thresholds are determined by the number of installs per day, per campaign that is. So how do you deal with this, right? How do you minimize the erosion or the obfuscation of conversions? 
the guidance we've gotten from platforms so far is that you will have minimal censoring of conversions if you hit a threshold number of daily installs per campaign. For Facebook, this is 88 installs per day. For Snapchat, this is 75 per day. For TikTok, it's 90 per day. Bear in mind, these install counts are per campaign. Why are these thresholds different for different sources? That's because the way Facebook defines a scan campaign could be very well different from the way Snapchat defines a snap camp scan campaign or TikTok does. For instance, Facebook might say, hey, this ad group within Facebook is a scan campaign, whereas Snap might say this entire campaign is a snap campaign. And so they're not always com comparable apples to apples. Obviously, all of this is in the current paradigm, which is Scan 3.0, where we have uh, you know, a, a certain architecture of campaigns and conversion values. What happens in Scan 4.0? Now, Scan 4.0 is not out. The documentation is not known yet, but we do have some details. What is known is that the 64-bit conversion value in Scan 3.0 changes to a two-part conversion value. This is a fine conversion value, which is essentially the same as the current scan 3.0 conversion value. That doesn't change. And there is also a coarse conversion value that can take three values, right? This could be high, medium, low, and could be mapped to early indicators of a user's value. It could be trial, consumed content, cancel trial, could be you know, an indicator of a user's value for uh, a subscription app. Uh, again, uh, and the way to think about this is, again, if you were to refer to Apple's documentation, I quote, uh, at the low end of crowd anonymity, uh, you, will, you will not receive a conversion value in your post back. At the medium level, you will receive the coarse conversion value. At the highest level, you will receive the fine grain conversion value in your post back. So the principles remain exactly the same as compared to the privacy thresholds of today, uh, even though the mechanics change, will change, and we will only know when the actual documentation comes out. So what you will continue to see is that at low volumes, a lot of your conversions get obfuscated. At high volumes, very, very few of your conversions will, and you really want to be max consolidating campaigns as much as possible, in order to maximize the conversion signals that you do receive. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog.